Okay, I am live again. I'm going to try this again. I am so sorry, you guys. Um, I don't know what's going on with my sound. It seemed to be working fine before, and my volume is up, and my... I don't know. So now I've got headphones on, and I'm going to try to do this before I go inside and um, join the festivities. So I know I'm not going to get a moment later. And, you know, I already kind of feel like a drowned rat with the rain and everything. It's Anyway... Um, I can only imagine how frustrating it is to want to hear what I have to say. And then, you know, again, this could sound anyway, don't worry about it. Let's try again. So it's 2016. It is the last day. And many of you might be making New Year's resolutions. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Some people believe in them and others don't. You know, they just figure they don't stick and why bother? And, and others are like, no, you, you have to make a resolution. You know what? Let's think about what we actually promise ourselves in the coming years. Oftentimes it's, um, you know, we're going to lose weight. We are going to increase our business. We're going to sell our house. We're going to get married. We're going to have a baby. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. And um, this year for 2017, it's my hope. Ah, Sandy, can you hear me? Ah, yay! Sandy, thank you. <laughs> oh, it's terrible to get all the way into that video and then realize that none of you can hear me. It's, oh, it's terrible. But anyway, okay, so then let me get to uh, my message to you and I won't, I'll try to keep it short this time because I know that all of you are out there and everybody's busy and you want to have a party and enjoy yourselves. So here's my hope for 2017. Let's take a real look at the resolutions that we've had in the past. We've been making resolutions for every single year, for 10 years, 20 years, promising ourselves that we're going to do something better this year that this is the year I quit my job and I'm going to become an entrepreneur and I'm going to start my business or, you know, we're, we're going to sell the house or we're going to move out of state and we're going to have a baby, whatever it is, whatever it is. Sometimes you make those goals, sometimes you don't. But even if you do make them, you have to think, okay, so overall, what has it done? What has it produced? Has it given you everlasting comfort, everlasting happiness, something that just gives you satisfaction nonstop? The answer is no. Always no. It's like a burning match. And every time you strike it, it's going to fizzle out eventually. And so every time we think, well, you got to set a new goal, Marilyn, you got to set a new goal. No, it's the same. Every single time you set a goal, whether you reach it or whether you don't, it's still that is that is this all there is? Why am I chasing this all the time? Life has to have more than this. Yes, it does. And I can promise you that. But see, up until now, we have been conditioned to follow the money. We live in fear of our needs not being met. And so we operate on autopilot on all the things that we do with each other whether it be co-workers or children or spouses or friends, it's autopilot, you know? Hi, how you doing? You know, I'm busy, I gotta go. Oh, you're doing great, good to see you, da-da-da. But you're chasing the dollar. And so what? You get your paycheck at the end of two weeks or you get your bonus or you get a really big client. At the end, it, doesn't, it just doesn't give you lasting satisfaction. There's no gratification there. It's so short-lived. And that's why you spend your whole life chasing this dollar. You're honoring it. And then that's why when you know you hear that um, the elderly, well, if you ask them, what would you be doing? What would you do different? Well, I would do a lot different. First of all, I wouldn't live in fear. I would get more stuff done that I wanted to do, but I would maintain my relationships. That is where the magic is learning how to love and that's something that we don't know how to do we know how to fall in love we know how to make a commitment when we cross a threshold 
we know how to have a child and feel that we love this child. But as they get older and they have a voice of their own, it becomes a little bit more challenging on what to do and what's right. Now they're teenagers like, oh my gosh, what to do, what's right. It's because there is no university of love. We don't know how to do it. So I'm saying for 2017, let's make a commitment to love, to just love. It's not easy because what that means is you're going to start judging, stop pretending, stop getting offended, start giving more, start understanding more, start to look at yourself in the mirror and understand I've got some serious walls here <laughs> that I need to get rid of. And this is what this fear of being hurt, of somebody coming and taking something from me that I don't necessarily want to give. All that stuff is keeping us from really living the life that we want to live and from having the things that we want to have. Not because man is giving it to us, not because our business is so great, but because we're living in God's favor. When we really know how to treat each other, to let down our walls, to have absolutely no fear. I have absolutely no fear that you can take anything from me that I'm not willing to give. Think of it. You can't take anything from me that I'm not willing to give. I can understand you. I understand your pain. I can give you my heart. I can give you my money. I can give you my coat. That's called living within your means. Living within your means is not saying I only have $10 so I can't spend 20. That's man's world of money. We have to stop thinking like that. Living within your means is what can I give today? You know what? I just saw somebody on the side of the road selling flowers in the rain. Can you give them the $5 for the bouquet? Yes, I can. I've got $5. Can I pull over? Oh, I'm in a hurry. I got somewhere to be. No, it's within your means to pull over, give the five bucks and support them. And be thankful that it's not you that's on the side of the road selling flowers. That's what I'm talking about. Appreciating humanity, loving each other, stopping long enough to say that is within my means. I can give right there. And I'm not saying bend over backwards. I'm not saying that, you know, to be, to let yourself be taken advantage of. It's just learning how to live in the magic of yes. Yes, I can do that. And it's not going to hurt me. And you know what? I don't have to worry about it because I know that I'm loving you. And as long as I'm loving you, everything will be provided for me. So I'm going to let go of all my fears. That's what we need to do for 2017, to become proficient at loving, at understanding, forgiving. Stop getting so offended. Stop worrying about being right. Let it go. Do you want to be right or do you want to be in love? I want to be in love. I want to be in love with you. I want to be in love with everyone. I want to have good relationships. I want to be able to hug you, to hold your hand without any fear whatsoever that you are going to get the wrong message. I want you to get the message that I love you. I have lips here that I can tell you I love you. I have lips that I can kiss you. I have a hand that I can hold your hand. I have two arms that can wrap around you and say, you know what, it's going to be okay. And I have two ears so I can listen to you. And I have a heart so I can feel you. This is what we need to do. Make a commitment to loving each other. Stop worrying about your business. Stop worrying about your pocketbook. Stop worrying about your bank account. Stop worrying about your credit cards. Don't worry about your taxes. Don't worry about your mortgage. All this, don't worry about it. Just look at me and you. Look at all of us and say, today I choose to love. And I don't have to be right. And I tell you what, your mortgage will get paid. Your credit cards will get paid. You'll be able to enjoy life like you would not imagine. And this is true freedom. This is when you wake up in gratitude going, oh my gosh, this is my life. This is my life right now. 
all I have to do is love? Yeah, it, that's what I was told. That's, that's all we have to do is just love each other. Try it. For 2017, I really, really hope that your resolution is to let down your walls, forget all your fears, and just commit to love. Learn how to do it. It's going to pay off big. It's going to pay off in a way that only gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You don't have to chase the money anymore. You don't have to sit there and think, well, next year I'm going to make 200000 Well, next year I'm going to make 300000 You don't have to do that. Because you have no idea what comes to you when you forget about the money. So... I am going to go in there. I'm going to celebrate these last few hours of 2016. I bless you and release you. I love you. Thank you for all of it, for the lessons that I learned, for the heartache, for the joy, for the blessings, for the unbelievable things that have happened to me in this year. (laughs) And now 2017, I can hardly wait. So to you, my friends, I love you. I'm tomorrow. As a matter of fact, Marie and I are going to be in Huntington Beach. I'm going to meet up with Debbie Helonia. And I'm hoping that if anybody else is out there, you get in touch with me. And maybe we can sit at the table, break bread together, have a great conversation. And, um, you know, I don't want to mention any names, but maybe um, Bob Donald might want to join us. (laughs) All of you friends. I don't, all of you. I wish all of you could come and join us tomorrow. But until then, if I'm in your neck of of the woods or just tell me where you are, we'll come see you. So, all right. Well, I love you all. I'm so sorry about the earlier video, but hopefully you guys, you got it this time. Happy New Year to all of you. Bye, Sandy, Marie, Ken, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.